everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel where we do painting tutorials. Today I have a very easy beginner's landscape using watercolor pencils and yet I'm going to try and keep it on the realistic side. So I start by coloring my sky with some light ultramarine. I'm using very light pressure because I want a nice soft diffused sky. I focus to get all of the spaces between the paper and the tape. And I want to try out something new, so I add just a hint of my earthy green on top of the sky to get a more muted down, a bit more of a lavender kind of sky. Then with a lot of water, I just dip my brush into the jar and then I do not dry it off on the napkin, I directly go on the paper and I go left to right in order to blend it very, very smoothly. While that dries, I take my earthing green and I cover the entirety of the bottom side of my painting with it. Since the top is still wet, I just finished uh, blending it, I start from the bottom of my grassy fields towards the top. That way, once I reach the top, the sky has already dried. But feel free to take your time, maybe go grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea if you're worried, if you don't want to risk accidentally using your pencils on the wet background because it leaves a mark that is not really erasable and you cannot activate it once you have a uh, color pencil put on a wet surface that is very very difficult to fix. And again I make sure I get all of the sides of the tape. I take some cadmium yellow and I randomly apply it over my field for a highlight. I do the same exact steps with my earthy tone, so with some yellow ochre I add down on top or on the side of my cadmium yellow. I add random patches of it over my landscape. Then I do the same with some raw sienna, I just follow the order in which I have my pencils. And I want to add some Venetian red on the bottom, which is this very warm almost rusty red, but it's not too saturated like cadmium red or a scarlet, it's very subtle, it's very muted and I like it very much for painting landscapes. Then I take my helium blue, which is my darkest blue, and I apply it on the space on top of which I did the yellow, the sienna, the ochre and the Venetian red. That way it looks like the yellow areas or the top of tiny hills and they're casting their shadow aka the dark blue behind. Then I get my cadmium orange and I lightly go over the dark blue because blue and orange neutralize each other and they make a very nice dark shadowy color. Then I thought I'd add a bit more green just to fill up any empty spaces. I want to do this in one layer, I don't want to do multiple layers because I want to keep this beginner friendly. I also add a bit more blue to intensify the shadows for that very reason. And I am applying it very lightly, I hold my pencil almost horizontal to my sketchbook, almost parallel, that way I get um, very little pressure and again these are artist quality art supplies, they are very saturated so I don't need to press too much. Then I get my watercolor brush, I do not dry it just like I did for the sky and I'm going to start working light to dark. So I start from any of those tiny hill areas I did, I start from the yellow or the raw sienna or the ochre and work my way down towards the blue, then I clean my brush and I do the same exact steps with the following hill, then I wash my brush and I repeat and repeat until I finish my landscape. It's perfectly fine if the bottom of a hill where it is dark blue bleeds onto the beginning of a new hill which is yellow, it's perfectly fine. I'm going for a soft diffused look here. I don't want too much of an edge, I don't want to get too much detail into this painting yet, I just want it very loose and very flowy. 
Now I'm going to leave this to completely air dry for 15-20 minutes and once it has dried, I want to make croissants in the meanwhile. I take again my earthy green and I start scribbling some random almost circular shapes. Blob is a better way to explain it with my green and these are going to be tiny trees. And also if you have a patch that dried up a bit weird, if you have any weird line or a bit that you do not like, you can just draw a blob on top of it and make it into a tree. That's why I do. Then I take my yellow and I apply it on the top side of my tree crowns for that spot where the light hits it first and that's usually where the leaves start to go yellow first. I add tiny tiny bits of orange, cadmium orange on top of my tree crowns as well. And then I outline the bottom and the left side with my dark blue because I want the sunlight to be coming from the top right, thus all of my shadows are going to be on the bottom left side of the trees. So I just very lightly outline those, take my time on the bottom side and on the left side because the tree crown is casting its shadow on the leaves that are closest to the bottom. And then I take some orange again and I go on top of the blue because like I said they neutralize each other. I take my brush and I do dry it very nice this time. I start blending using a tapping motion. What that means is I go with my hand with the brush, basically like the needle in a sewing machine, up and down, up and down, and I just do very light touches to get a, lot, a good amount of texture to mimic the foliage of a tree, and I go from the yellowy area towards the green towards the blue, aka I'm working from light to dark. And if drawing is not your thing, there is going to be a traceable available to this and many other paintings over at my Patreon page, Sunshine Arts. And at some point next week, definitely before the end of the month, I'm going to upload a full-time narrated tutorial of this painting that's going to be exclusive to my Patreon page. So if you're into that kind of stuff and extra goodies, you can find me at Sunshine Arts, link is going to be in the description, along with all of the supplies I have used throughout this video, and also the reference picture. Then using back to us, using my dark blue, I very lightly go under the trees to add their shadows on top of the field, to add the tree crown shadow that is being casted on the field. So I tend to do it a bit more to the left side because the sun is on the right side. And then I take my walnut brown, which is my darkest brown, and very very lightly go on top of that blue shadow. And I thought I'd add just a smidge of black, because in the reference picture the shadow is very saturated, it looks jet black, but I didn't want that for my painting. I want it to be more soft and diffused. Then I take my brown, which I have sharpened to a very fine point, and I just do some I letter and V letter shapes for tree trunks for my tiny trees. A little bonus tip, you may want to do tiny lines and dashes in the tree crown itself to make it look like tree branches that are peeking through the foliage. And I'm not going to activate the shadows that I added. I like it as is. I like the texture it gives. It's 100% up to personal preference and what you like and don't like. I like it as is, so I'm just going to leave it like that. Then I'm just going to slowly peel off the tape in the opposite direction to avoid from ripping my paper. I'd like to give a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters for the month of June and thank you all for watching. We'll see each other in the next video. Bye bye!